Okay. Um, also, Briggs had a side sideline meeting, uh, yeah. four ministers a sideline meeting. Yeah. So, um, but they uh, they they failed to issue a joint statement, which yeah. seems to like the the problem is that some countries are not do not want to uh, promise, which I, I make the promise that they will support India, Brazil, and South Africa to become the permanent uh, UN Security Council member. Yeah. So. What is your view on that? I personally think even country make those promise. I mean, the the way the UN set up right now, I don't think anybody can can join the 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 permanent council. Um, but it does seem like, in particular, India really pushing for this. Like, mm. so what what's going on there? Well, you you're absolutely right. India has wanted to. India feels. That you uh -huh. know, it's, uh, it's the world's third largest economy. It's the, in population terms, the world's largest country. Um, it's got a very powerful military. It's got nuclear weapons. It's got uh, a huge influence in world affairs. They say, you know, why should Britain and France be members of the Security Council and not India? And you know, one can understand their logic completely. And um, at, at the same time, there are problems. And specifically in this case, I understand the major sticking problem, the sticking issue was South Africa, South Africa's membership of the Security Council. Um, some of the new African members of BRICS, Ethiopia in particular, did not feel that South Africa should be the country to represent the whole of Africa. In the Security Council, so this is partly this is this is the main the main issue there. But you're absolutely right. Um, Security Council reform is effectively impossible, and the reason it is impossible is because the Western powers don't want it. They don't want it because if it happens, it will dilute their 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 institutional majority. In the Security Council, we have three Western secure uh, Western states that are permanent members: Britain, France, and the United States. And the way in which voting is weighed in elections to the Security Council, it means that the United States and the West can rely on a majority of between nine and ten. So they don't want they don't want that to change. They want it to remain as it is. Because from their point of view, it means that on most issues and on most days, they have uh, a, an inbuilt advantage in the Security Council. And without the agreement of all of the members of the Security Council, it's impossible to see how change can happen. Well, I don't know. Um, I, I think even China and Russia are not that enthusiastic to have no. dramatic changes. No. Here's the thing. So yes, we can say right now the five permanent members, which is the most uh, you know people fighting about, saying unfair, you know they have the veto power, etc. Yeah. Um, but the, here's the thing: uh, it is true there are two European countries and there is no African representatives. Mm. But let's say let's say we we can have one, but like you said, who should be the one representing African countries? How about South America? Do they, you know, Brazil? But yeah. also, I'm not sure all the South major South American countries are fine with Brazil to present to to represent them mm. because mm. Brazil even is large. It's but it's the only country who speak uh, Portuguese. All the other South American countries speak Spanish. Mm. Um, so etc. Right. So who should be the one representing South America? Who should be the one to represent uh, Africa? And of course, uh, France and Britain, none of them will go easily. Of course, they will fight, yeah. you know, to the, to the end, they will to stay yeah, there. Yeah. So in that case, maybe the most fair way to me is like to keep it as it is right now. I, I think, well, I think probably don't, don't change it at, at all, I think. Unfortunately. Well, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think, well, I think that's what's going to happen. Also, I don't think it's going to change. I mean, there'll be lots of complaints. Lots of people will be angry. The Indians, in particular, will feel very, very aggrieved. Um, but realistically, since it cannot be changed, I mean, it cannot be changed. Um, one can understand why the Chinese and the Russians say, "Well, we have this massive obstacle." Mm -hmm. Trying to push this is going to create more problems. We've seen that South Africa 
is the, what didn't get full support from all the African states. You're absolutely right about Brazil, by the way. I mean, Argentina would not be happy if Brazil joined the Security Council. Just, just to give you one example, uh, uh, Mexico would say, well, you know, why don't we have a Spanish-speaking country on the Security Council? We don't have much in common with Brazil at all. They're completely different from us. Uh, so you can see that the Arab states would say, why aren't we there too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, which one then? Saudi Arabia? Egypt, which which yeah. of the Arab states would be there on the Security Council? So, I mean, it, we have this expression in England, opening a can of worms. <laughs> One yeah. rather feels that at the moment there are more important and pressing things in the international system than, you know, changing the situation in the Security Council. You could argue, if you ignore the anomaly, that Britain and France are still there, that the three countries that ultimately matter, the US, China and Russia, they are all on the Security Council. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best way just to, because, I mean, the US, there are even people like Japan and Germany, they even talking about, I, I mean, yeah. in my astonishment, how can they even bring this up considering what they did in yeah. World War II and Japan, you know, never admitted or apologized to what they did. And yet they are talking about, they should be the one into the yeah. Security Council permanent member. I mean, everyone seems to want to come in. Then mm. in that case, the best is just no one coming in. Just Absolutely, it. Leave, yeah. leave it as it is. I mean, Japan yeah. is Japan is an absurd idea. Yeah. Uh, but Germany is even more absurd, actually. Not not so much even because of the history, but because, yeah. I mean, uh, Germany would be just a, a third European, West yeah. European yeah. country in yeah. the Security Council. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it would make absolutely no sense at all. So, yeah. no, I mean, they, as I said, leave it as it is. The three, the, the countries that for the moment are the three most important, the United States, a superpower, China, unquestionably a superpower, Russia, not as powerful, of course, as the other two, but still a force to be reckoned with. They are all there. And yeah. that's it's between these three countries that the real discussions take place. Yeah. So yeah. just just leave it alone. <laughs> But, but they will keep on. I mean, they, there is always um, countries that keep on doing this. And in Japan, yeah. trying to buy some votes, you know, from some poor countries and giving them aid mm -hmm. in exchange for them mm -hmm. to push this and that, they will yeah. never stop. You know, India will continue. Yes. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we will it continue. Will continue. It, it yeah. will continue. But the most important things that are happening with BRICS, there are issues with BRICS. I mean, they're, they're, uh, but this is, of course, the advantage of BRICS. It, it, it's not something that everybody has to sign up to every single thing that BRICS does because it's a fairly loose group. So there's the financial global trading things that BRICS are trying to set up, and I think they will make moves that, with that. And the other thing, and there's been some very positive comments about them coming from the Indian side, that the negotiations over the border conflict between China and India apparently are actually making progress at last. And there's reports that, I think it was Jai Shankar, the Indian foreign minister, said that there's been 75% agreement and there's still unresolved issues, but they are making progress. And for me, that's the single most important problem of all, because... Yeah. If China and India, which had been such good friends in the 50s, by the way, yeah. I can remember I can remember people talking about Zhou Enlai and Nehru, how they used to work yeah. together. If that can be resolved, then, as I said, that would ma make a massive change in international relations. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. The other thing, uh, I don't know if you paid attention, there is another meeting uh, called the G77. They also on the sideline had their, their meeting. So there is a lot of sideline meetings that during this mm. uh, UN assembly. Um, mm. So I just heard about this. I didn't know about this, but mm. uh, apparently this was an old organization. They established in 1964. Now mm. the idea, according to their website, is to articulate and promote the collective economic interest and enhance their joint negotiation capacity. Mm. So seems to me like a, when they established, it was more about economy and to have some joint mm. bargaining power or something. And mm. it has the increase to 134 members now, but China is mm. not there. But now, but they had, they, uh, this is not a UN assembly, so, sorry, uh, so, so I mean, this was in Cuba. They had this meeting in Cuba, uh, Havana, 
So it's called the G77 plus China. So the, and, and even uh, Anto, uh, Antonio Gutierrez was there. Um, oh, so so that, that's an interesting organization having their meeting. And then their joint mm -hmm. statement, the, the most important sentence I see coming out of their, their close statement is a call for establishment of a new economic world order. So you see, China is busy with BRICS, with the countries like yeah. G77, these kind of groups. Ver mm -hmm. that, that's China's approach versus the U.S. is about quad, AUKUS, mm -hmm. you know, very tiny, small groups yeah. and with one targets, which is China, whereas China's approach is working with as many people as possible doing trade mm -hmm. and solving economic issues. Right. That, yeah. Those are two very different approaches. And that seems to me is where a real leader should be. What, what's yeah. your take? You're absolutely correct. I mean, this is, a, by the way, I mean, I, I, I didn't know about the group of 77, but um, the, this talk about setting up a new world economic order, order. Uh, was very, very, I can remember it being talked about very much in the 70s and 60s. So this isn't new. It, 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 it was very much something that people would talk, countries were talking about then. Um, after the collapse of the European, the colonial empires, when a lot of countries became, became free. And they said, you know, we don't want to be commodity producers for the rich Western states anymore. We want to develop our economies and to industrialize and to develop, you know, become modern countries. And of course, the West always used to pretend that it agreed and it never did. And the Soviets always said that they agreed, but they couldn't really help. And anyway, I don't think they were very ultimately very interested in helping. So what I think is now happening, and it's extremely interesting, is that clearly the countries that back in the 60s were forming these groups, and it's interesting that Cuba is where all this is happening. Uh, uh, the, the countries that formed all these groupings then and had those ideas then and probably still have these ideas to this day are now joining up with China and probably other BRICS states, because suddenly those ideas of the 60s, because it's in the 60s that they really started to surface, so those ideas of the 60s, which seemed very utopian and idealistic then, are suddenly becoming practical and possible. And absolutely, you are completely correct. China is heavily involved in all of this, as to the extent that it could be. It was in the yeah. 60s, too, by the way. I mean, just just to say, I mean, this is this is something that people overlook. But the Chinese were already busy building railways in Africa and doing that kind of thing. So uh, but the Chinese obviously no, never forgotten that There's, they're very active and fully engaged with it. And you're absolutely right. This is the positive way forward not this constant attempt to divide everybody into blocks and to seek block confrontation and to try to talk about prolonging hegemony. You know, Boris Johnson actually said that, you know, we need to win the war in Ukraine in order to pr maintain Western hegemony. Now, just astonished that he was able, he was prepared to use that word. Yeah, being a hegemony is different than being a leader, right? I, I find that's two different yeah. concepts. Hegemony is more, I don't know, kind of like a dominant and, and a scary in a way. Leader. Well, remember, re remember, these are Greek words. Hegemony <laughs> is a Greek word, and uh, and uh, leader. Well, we have a different word for for, lead, for leader. Yeah. A leader is is the person who is first in, in Greek. Mm -hmm. Archigos. It's the person who is there at lead who guides and leads the others. A hegemon in Greek, in ancient Greek especially, is very, very close to a tyrant. <laughs> I just yeah. say that because that's, you know, this is my language, so I know what this means. It's, a, it's They're profoundly different concepts. But I think the West or the US doesn't seem to know the difference. I think they feel like a, we are the one who make all the decisions, we are the one who need to control everything. And for them, that seems like a, put them into a leader position, but that's not it's, that's not what it is. That's not what the leadership, they're kind of like a mafia leader in a way. They scare yeah. everybody, right? That's exactly, you're, 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 you're exactly correct. That is exactly what it, 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 how, 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 it, how it really is. Of course, to some extent, maybe they 
generally believe all the nonsense they tell us about how mm -hmm. you know yeah. they're yeah. entitled to lead because they're the great democracy and they stand for freedom and liberty and all that and human rights and all that and they're somehow gives them the right to lead but of course they don't really mean lead exactly as you said they mean dictate mm -hmm. yeah and, and threatening many times they're very and threatening. threatening oh absolutely yeah. very threatening yeah